It's an election unlike anything we've ever seen. People in Wisconsin have a tough choice to make, protect their health or exercise their right to vote. The special election in Wisconsin in April for the Supreme Court seat, Republicans did everything they could to suppress the vote. It was people playing politics with our, our lives. It seemed like Republicans were going to succeed. Literally weaponizing a global pandemic. Taking away my right to vote. So what do the Democrats do? Just turn on a dime to become digital organizers. You just got to keep fighting. You can't give up. We had to do everything we could do because the spring election was a dress rehearsal for the showdown against Trump in November. We can organize our way into a landslide. Statewide voters are deciding who will sit on the Wisconsin Supreme Court. A crucial spring general election on April 7th. As we planned our spring election campaign for Supreme Court, the stakes were super high. In 2016, Trump won Wisconsin by less than one percentage point, 22,748 votes. They said Donald Trump has won the state of Wisconsin. Hundreds of thousands of people who voted in 2012 didn't vote in 2016. So after 2016 and the agony and the heartbreak, the real work began. We wanted to, to boost turnout. We want to make sure that what happened in 2016 doesn't happen again in 2020. We're going to pour everything we've got into organizing for our April 7th Supreme Court race. Judge Jill Karofsky is challenging incumbent Justice Daniel Kelly for a 10-year term. Wisconsin has been a, a close state, a purple state, for a long time. And with Jill Karofsky running against the incumbent conservative Dan Kelly, it had all of the makings of a, of a partisan battle. Justice Daniel Kelly. Go vote for Justice Daniel Kelly to defend the rule of law in Wisconsin, Daniel Kelly. It was a trial run for us in the spring uh, to actually say, have we built the thing that is big enough and bad enough to win this statewide race in a really, really, really um, difficult state? The Democratic Party of Wisconsin launched a neighbor-to-neighbor -neighbor program, running it door-to-door, neighbor-to-neighbor. -to -neighbor. At the same time, there are grassroots organizations in every part of our state that are mobilizing voters. So BLOCK stands for Black Leaders Organizing for Communities. And it was founded to knock doors on a year-round basis, and that people from the community would engage our own community. to our work. Actually, um, I used to be a bad girl. We led a girls' gang here in Milwaukee. And that's when I seen a, a elementary school friend. She told me that Block was hiring and that they were looking for canvassers. Well, I'm a little overweight, so I'm like, OK, maybe I'll get a little exercise in and lose a few pounds. I was statewide college Dems chair 2018, but 2020, I didn't even know that it was gonna be a reality for me um, because I ended up getting really sick. They diagnosed me with Crohn's disease. I was in the hospital for about a month, but I came back with like a renewed sense of like why I really cared about the work. I wanna use my privilege to like fight for candidates who will protect and expand healthcare. Latinx people have historically not been included in the voting process. And one of the big things that we're doing right now is finding and identifying you know, Latinx voters. Our goal is to, to grow that base and deliver Wisconsin. People in cities look at rural areas thinking that there's not a lot of votes there, so we don't have to spend a lot of time there. And I wanted to be the person to go to these far to reach places and say like, hey, there are other Democrats around here. Let's organize because it's going to come down to so few votes that we need to go to every single zip code in this state. There were neighborhood team leaders all over Wisconsin in rural places and in suburbs, in Milwaukee and Madison. And we knew that that meant we'd be able to knock on doors. 
We hired an extra 17 people to bring them up to 50 folks out on doors. The campus model usually is a lot of like in your face, high traffic canvassing. Going out in the community, rubbing elbows and shaking hands buying office space, recruiting people to go knock door to door. We were celebrating our biggest grassroots organizing program ever. Um, so... The CDC is confirming the first case in the U.S. of a new and deadly coronavirus. Malls, restaurants, sporting events, museums, libraries, houses of worship, all shut down. It was like, poof, a cloud of dark smoke, you know? My world and my role had been completely flipped upside down. Some of our partners were like, what now? You're not going to have people knock doors? The urgent message from city leaders in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, COVID-19 is no joke. Take the safer at home order I signed today seriously. And our first thought was that, well, this Supreme Court race from now on is just going to be fought in TV commercials. It'll just be dueling TV commercials and may the best person win because you can't knock on doors. But what we perhaps didn't count on was just how much more online activity there would be. I went from spending my days crisscrossing all over the northern part of Wisconsin to trying to teach people how to use Zoom. They did a texting party to recruit volunteers while watching Perks of Being a Wallflower. So we were like on Zoom while texting. Well, I'm not knocking your door now. So Facebook Live it is. <laughs> Go to myvote.wi.gov. OK, live and direct here. We're running virtual trainings every single night, and we decide it's time to help people vote by mail. Think of how hard this is for people who have never requested absentee ballots, who've never voted by mail, who've only voted in person. Hey, I had never requested an absentee ballot before. I didn't know how to vote by mail. It is complicated to do. There's a photo ID law, talk about voter suppression in Wisconsin, where you have to upload a photo. We were gonna move people through this process step by step, because if people request absentee ballots now, they will know how to do this when it comes to November. We tried something that was really powerful called relational organizing. What does it look like for each person to contact 10 of their phone contacts and start to have conversations about the election? If I could get my student leaders to, you know, understand what it takes to request an absentee ballot, they should be able to tell their friends and then tell more friends. The snowball effect. We are the best messengers to motivate our people. The typical phone bank contact rate is about 12%, but with the relational organizing program, we had a 71% contact rate. The cool thing about this relational organizing is we know who those people are. You're the greatest messenger for your mom, your dad, your family members, and neighbors. The number of absentee ballot applications go up and up and up each week as all of these organizers are finally reaching voters and teaching them on the fly how to apply for an absentee ballot. We've got 11 viewers. Hey, y'all, y'all miss me. I miss y'all. I ain't trying to lose y'all either. But hey, Big Papa, uh, we've got- I was pushing out on workday on Facebook Live, and uh, Kiana is my homegirl. She goes, well, I need to vote. We were on Messenger. She walked me through the process. I was like, well, whenever you're ready, you know, just get your, all you need is your ID. And I gave her the information she herself. And she was like, Kiva, it ain't work, it ain't work. And I was like, okay, don't worry. Like, okay, yeah. I'll walk you through it. So what I did was, then uh, she, she goes, her sister hasn't voted and uh, she thinks she needs to re-register. Can I help her? You know, she was all excited. I know a lot of people. Yep. So I'm on there like, <laughs> that's how it works. That's how about. Is. It's literally through relationships like this. Yeah. People are getting online every night and telling people how to vote by mail. Pretty quickly, it's clear that records are gonna fall. It crosses a million requests for absentee ballots. But we're getting reports from people who requested absentee ballots that never came. I had mailed off for the absentee ballot long before it was election time. So I was, I was just trying to figure out, like, where is it at before election time? As the election got closer, things started looking worse and worse. So 
saw out 187 voting polls here in Milwaukee, they only posted five. Five. Thousands of people would have to go through the same locations to cast their ballots, which would increase the risk of infection. There's no safe way to run an election in these conditions. Plenty of time to delay this and give us enough time to send ballots to every voter. Republicans are arguing no. But, oh, safety, safety. Well, no, I think that mail-in voting is a terrible thing. I think if you vote, you should go. This attempt to suppress votes because they think it gives them an electoral advantage. The Democratic Party of Wisconsin and the Democratic National Committee went to court to delay the election and to mail a ballot to every voter. A broad coalition of progressive groups files lawsuits about next week's election. We were winning some things, and then it would be appealed, and then it would change. Tuesday's election is in limbo with a lot of unknowns. It's the day before the election. Republicans sue straight to our state Supreme Court. They knew they had the numbers to win a case. And just about an hour ago, the state Supreme Court issued its ruling saying that indeed the election will happen tomorrow. We've got judges who don't even want to protect the people. That was immoral. We knew that thousands of people had requested their ballots and had not yet got them. They had an impossible choice to make between their right to vote or their health. Election day in Wisconsin and everyone is watching. Folks have been lining up. In Election day finally happened. Like a good millennial, the first thing I did was scroll Facebook. My whole feed was just people being really angry, upset, sad, frustrated. And you saw people standing there trying their best to be socially distant. Like it was very early on, masks were not easy to come by. Voters were breaking down into tears. Uh, I was upset that there's this, this much of, that there's that much of a disregard for the health of the nation's people as a whole. That they did not take into account this disease. That they did not take into account all the people with disabilities that hidden, all the people with the elderly, all the people that couldn't come in there. had sent in the mail for an absentee ballot. It never came, me and my sisters never came. By the ballot not coming, I just felt like that was a way of them, like, oh, they didn't get the absentee ballot, they're not gonna go vote. So I had to go to the polls. But I voted, like, I, I matter. Despite Republicans doing everything they could to make people think that voting wasn't worth it, there was a backlash. A bunch of people said, actually, it is. People voted directly in defiance to the voter suppression. And the polls close. And we start seeing turnout numbers. Voting is up in rural Wisconsin, it's up in suburban Wisconsin, it's up in urban Wisconsin. More people are voting. So the ballots keep coming in. The numbers are just blowing all of us away. And I pick up the phone and he's like, I think we won. Jill Kurofsky is the projected winner on Wisconsin's Supreme Court. This giant Zoom call of like 100 people just like erupted. We had helped Wisconsinites shift completely how they'd voted in place after place. Turnout was through the roof because so many people had figured out how to vote by mail. All of that work, making phone calls and sending text messages and posting on social media, had generated a world where so many Democrats had figured out how to navigate the system to vote from home. We don't win by making people more scared than the other side does. We win by helping people realize how powerful they are. 
Republicans' election plan depends on their ability to suppress the votes at the polls. And it's going to play out all the way until Election Day in November. We can cut through by using our own voices. So voter suppression has been around for forever. We just got to keep getting out there. You got to organize. Because they are counting on your cynicism. And the way to beat it is to show up and to work even harder. My brother, I have to motivate him. I have to remind him constantly to go vote. Um, but he does. You also have your Facebook friends, your Instagram followers, your Twitter followers. And if it comes down to you calling five people you know and convincing them. Because you believe that it's so important and you believe that the country's at stake. You know what's my motivation? People. We just have to have the courage to use our voices in this digital moment. No matter where you are, you can help. When you reach out to people that you know in your own life, you can help people to cast a ballot, maybe for the first time in their lives. This can result in victory. We had always planned for the spring election to be a dress rehearsal for the showdown against Trump. The dress rehearsal was a smashing success. And now it's time for the real play.